Hi, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, and welcome to the Lifeboat and Bless to Crochet. Um, I am so excited. Uh, just what a great honor this is. And um, I have great respect. Um, so welcome, everybody, to the Lifeboat and to Bless to Crochet. Um, I appreciate just everybody's support. Um, it means absolutely the world to me. Um, and I'm very thankful. We are going to, um, not sure if we can put up comments yet. So, um, if we can't uh, from getting it from the lifeboat, you may have to come over to Blaster Crochet to do that. So let me do a little bit of roll call, uh, hope between the dreams and Rhonda and Jason P and, Stir Us and Conversations with Christy and Brazy Girl and Rolling Stone, um, Evil Twin Sister. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, this is just, just such an honor. It really is. I'm just beaming. Um, I have to kind of tell a story. Hi, Gypsy Daisy, real quick. This is just going to be getting to know me. Um, my name is Mary. Uh, you do not have to crochet to be a part of my community. I started this for the basis of connection because connection was a very, very powerful, powerful um, uh, force in my life through this channel in December. But um, I was kind of clearing that area up back there and I had lost an earring that I had gotten when we were, um, you know, when we were my dad had passed away and I had found these earrings and it just kind of reminded me of him. And I lost one of the earrings for a while. And I decided I'm going to clean that area up and make it look nice. And um, one of the earrings was underneath my Cricut machine. And I thought, thanks dad. And so what I told my crew, hi, Sharon Smith, was that when I'm wearing this necklace, which is an anchor, uh, it means I am simulcasting between my uh, channel and uh, the lifeboat. And when the microphone is this color versus my normal purple, it means I'm simulcasting as well. I figured fire color for honor of our Captain Spanks, our Captain Calhoun. <laughs> I think he goes by both. Um, but I just want to say, you know, welcome. Um, and uh, we're going to do what we can. I don't know if we can. I don't think I can get comments up. So, um that's all work in progress. Um, this is kind of a boat that is under a little bit of construction right now, and that's fine. We're going to make it better. It's getting a new paint job. It's gotten a new engine. It's getting a little new crew added to it. The rooms are kind of getting, you know, fancied up a little bit and repainted and so forth. And so let's just have a lot of patience um, that being able to show the comments on this may not be something that I'm able to do yet, but we'll get there. Um, and we'll get through it. Uh, surviving together will be on at 3 PM. So I'm going to have, I'm sure one of the mods will put that in so everybody can go over to surviving together at 3 PM and give her love and support. Um, if you're a part of the lifeboat and you have a channel, I have placed a list in the Facebook group. Uh, please put your channel, please put the information, like your handle that you use on YouTube on the lifeboat. Um, if you have set times, um, you know, uh, your content, your main content, and then your sub content. And I'm trying to get a list together for Spanx and I'm trying to get a list together for the crew. Um, if you don't have Facebook, my email is on my channel. Just email me your information and I will add you to the list. I want to get a, 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 you know, a list together. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Wally. I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm just so excited. Um, I'm going to keep saying that throughout this, uh, this stream. Uh, but I kind of wanted you all to kind of get to know me. Those that have kind of my story of how I got on the lifeboat. Um, it started and I'm not telling you my age. <laughs> I am going to celebrate my 29th birthday again in June. Um, I have celebrated it successfully every year and I celebrate my 29th birthday over and over again. Um, but, um, I was 12 years old when I of course found Elvis and see 
there's a little thing of Elvis back in the back of me. Um, and at that time, I thought that, um, you know, being 12, oh, I thought he was really cute. And I was surrounded by music that I, my grandmother put me in front of uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and Liza Minnelli and Barbara Streisand and, and all these artists. She, she put me in front of those people. So I was influenced very highly by that. I remember being in high school and my teacher said to me, what kind of music do you like? And I rattled off all these artists. And he said to me, I got to Johnny Mathis and he said, Johnny Mathis, you know who he is, let alone how to say his name. <laughs> I've actually been to one of his concerts. Um, and hi, Charlie Mullins um, and V-Bombs. Um, and so I was very influenced by all that. I wasn't really influenced by the music of the 80s and 90s heavily. But I saw Elvis as they were celebrating his 10th anniversary of his passing. And I thought, oh, he's cute. And that was just it. Well, my dad was somewhat of an Elvis fan. I became a real Elvis fan. Not that there's any difference, but I really just connected with his music on a very powerful level. Um, I've been to Graceland three times, survived Elvis week. Um, and I've been once with my mom and dad, which is a very, very special memory. Um, and so I got into uh, growing up in Scientology because I was very interested in Lisa Marie and um, Priscilla Presley, um, you know, their interaction with Scientology. V-Bombs live music is awesome. It makes me happy. Yes, so does it does to me as well. Music is something I love. Um, and I just wanted to understand it more. Um, I had spent most of my time, half of my Elvis you know, just loving the music, but I wanted to go past that. I wanted to get to know who Elvis was. And, um, I, oh, watching that live. Oh my goodness. That would have been awesome. Rolling Stones to be able to see that live. And so I started getting into who he was listening to bodyguards and what they had to say and close people around him. Um, those that don't know it, Elvis actually went in and was recruited by Scientology. Um, I don't know whether he went in for a personality test or to get auditing done, but he didn't last very long. He walked in, he walked out, he looked at his bodyguards and he said, I'm not going to say expletives. He said, I am out of here. He said, there is no way that these people are getting my money. And he left. They did get it indirectly, but he left. He was going to have nothing to do with it. And so... I got into, and Kathy is my mom. <laughs> I got into um, uh, AA Ron because um, I just wanted to understand Scientology. Um, and um, that's when, you know, all the stuff happened with Danny Masterson and Tommy came on. And I went and supported Tommy as I supported Reese and all those other things. And I thought, I don't need the lifeboat. I'm not an addict. Oh, well, yeah, I am. I do struggle with food addiction. Um, and I thought, I don't need, I don't need this. I don't, I'm just going to come support. I'd had families that were addicts. So I was interested in it to some degree. Um, and I just started coming in more and more. I paid attention to, um, yes, Rhonda, good job, Elvis, avoiding that cult. Um, more and more, I got into um, finding it part of my everyday life and starting to connect with the people in the chat. And it wasn't until December of last year where, it, where the lifeboat changed. It was no longer a channel. It was a part of my everyday life. It was connection. It became real for me in December because, um, hi, Kristen, um, Melinda, uh, I it became real because, um, I actually had, um, I actually had, um, an incident happen in my family where my aunt was diagnosed with stage four liver and lung cancer. Uh, she is in chemo and doing well. And then my, uh, I had a family member that chose that she was just, that person was going to disconnect from me and, um, not, really over nothing that was major stuff that could have been worked out. 
I know that she was under a tremendous amount of stress, but she could have said, listen, I need a break for a while. Can I, I'll come back. I love you. And that was not something that the person chose to do. Um, and that was very sad. Um, but on top of that, it was Christmas time and New Year's Eve and New Year's Day is difficult some years more than others, because that's when my dad and my grandfather both passed away. Uh, my grandfather in 97, uh, 10 minutes before uh, New Year's Day on New Year's Eve, and my dad, New Year's Day of 2021 uh, on the on January 1st, New Year's Day. So I kind of struggle with those days. And I was waking up in the middle of the night actually having uh, panic attacks, which as a fibromyalgia survivor and warrior, I deal with. Um, and I hate panic attacks, but I hate them even more when you're not aware of them and you're sleeping. But it was a time when I relied on connecting in the lifeboat tremendously. And there was one person who said, I'm here along with a lot of other people, but they were, they were my rock. I have my husband, I have my mom, I have my daughter and my family. I love them. But friends were not something that I totally had in my life. And this person came beside and just was there, was checking in on me every day, was listening to me as I was kind of grieving this loss um, and grieving uh, to some degree that anniversary that comes up every year for me. And um, I just connected. That's one of the reasons why I sent Tommy that um, gift with the Shawshank mug and the, the water bottle and the jam and all that kind of stuff, because I just wanted to say thank you. The, the lifeboat became real because of the people in the lifeboat and the channel that was in there, people in the chat. And, um, you know, that's when I decided, hey, I'm going to just start my channel. And I always love Bless to Crochet. I love that name because my mantra is you don't have to crochet to be a part of my community, but you just have to come and connect. Um, connection became real. Um, friendships became real. Um, and Rolling Stone says on Tommy's efforts throughout the month of December to get his crew through the holidays were nothing less than heroic. Absolutely. I agree with that. Um, and I thought to me, my motto is I'm blessed to crochet. I'm blessed to do a lot of things, but you also are blessed to do something. What are you blessed to do? So it doesn't have to be crochet, but when you're dealing with a chronic illness or fibromyalgia, you need to put something in your toolbox that you can do to help you through when you're dealing with a chronic illness or so forth. So um, it became real to me. I connected with people and I thought, I'm just going to start this channel. Who wants to watch me? <laughs> and people came from the lifeboat and they have done nothing but support me. And I am just so appreciative and so thankful for each and every one of you. And um, I just came in and I just, I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. If you watch and go back on my channel and watch my first live, it was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I was nervous and I have just gotten more and more confident and I have improved and I will continue to approve. So, um, you know, this is, I said today when Spank, when Captain Calhoun was like, you know, one of my ripples wants to start, I'm like, I'll do it. I'll be the first. <laughs> and, um, I thought I'll jump in because a lot of us that have, uh, channels, I know mine is under 400. Um, they have under 500. They're walking in to a channel that has 20,000 people. So I know that the Lifeboat crew will give nothing but love and patience and understanding as we're trying to, you know, Captain Calhoun is trying to implement it, you know, put this in, in, in the process and, and make it so we truly can make the Lifeboat where you can stop in anytime and there's somebody always on. So let's give support and love. Let's not flood him with a lot of emails. Um, he will appreciate emails, but let's just keep everything really positive because this is a positive move. You know, if we think about a plant, if you start off a plant in a little pot, eventually you're going to have to, um, you know, you're going to have to move it to a bigger pot because it's going to grow and its roots are going to grow. And if you keep it in the same pot, 
its roots are eventually going to suffocate it and you have to move it to a bigger pot. You have to continue to grow it. That's kind of what's happening here. We're moving and we're, we're growing and, it, and, and change in a whole. I'm glad I'm here too. The change in the whole is, is hard. Change is really hard. And I will talk about that. I have raised a daughter with um, special needs uh, who has autism and change for her was really, really difficult. And I don't care who you are. <laughs> change in itself can be a real struggle. We decided on Thursday, I think it was, to order pizza. I had decided to, not decided, but my foot decided to find the vacuum cord and trip over it. And it kind of messed up my back for a couple of days. And um, my husband's like, let's watch a movie. It was like nine o'clock. Let's just order pizza. Well, we ordered it and we ordered it at nine o'clock. It arrived at 1145. I will not tell you which place it was, but uh it was cold. It was wrong. <laughs> we got a credit back from it. But the thing was, is when I called the next day to say, listen, I don't really think I should even pay for this. You know what happened? She said to me, she said, you know what? We implemented a brand new system that was supposed to make life easier for our staff. And I think it made life harder because it's a change. It's a relatively easy system. Hi, Midnight Show or the Midnight Show. Uh, you know, the system easier, but it, it threw everybody off a loop because everybody was like, wait a minute, here's a new system we have to learn. And it's all different. And things, you know, deliveries were late, orders were wrong, and it was just a mess. And so we all have to deal with change. And sometimes it's easier or harder for others. And that's fine. Let's help each other through it. That's what the lifeboat is for. We are all here. Hi, related boat. <laughs> um, you know, well, thank you, Kelsey. Uh, thank you very much. My Mary, your voice is soothing. Words are true. Yes. We're all a part of this community and we're all a part to help each other through. Nobody needs to suffer in silence. Um, everybody, um, you know, everybody is here to do nothing else but support conversations through Christie says living a gypsy life may my life changes all the time. It took some getting used to, but now I love my adventures that await, but it's stressful at first. Yes, it is. Um, and I think you need to put pizza or I was reading the comment from Rolling Stones, an excellent customer service, but the pizza place manager. Yes, it was. Um, thank you, related both. Um, you know, we we can put things in place when we're going to be faced with a change. Uh, we can put things in place and things, you know, keeping some. But sometimes when we're it, when change is happening, we want to we want to control the minor stuff and you know, sometimes that's good and sometimes that's not so good. So, um, thank you, Joan, Joan, Joanne Reese. Thank you. <laughs> I'm nervous y'all. I'm, I'm beaming. I think I'm going to be high on this for the rest of the day. Um, well, the only constant in life is change is still sucks. And I'm going to say that I don't want to, I don't want to get the name wrong. <laughs> Match murder legal. I think I probably messed that up. And if I did, I'm really sorry, but it's true. Everything changes. Um, and so that is something that I can talk about. Uh, <laughs> I love you too, Krista Melinda. You are awesome. Um, blessed to get out of bed, Kelsey. Isn't that the truth? Um, I deal with fibromyalgia. Um, I deal with, um, I raise a special needs child. Um, I've had experience training, uh, being, you know, having not training personally, but working with an agency to train a service dog, um, uh, for my daughter that needed it at the time. Um, I think Spanx is in the back doing that because we haven't figured out how to do that yet. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, I ha deal with, of course, uh, food addiction and, um, tending to eat, 
when I'm emotional um, because that helps to die the pain down. I've had family members that were addicts, so I have history of that. Uh, Rhonda says, change is difficult. We are like and get comfortable with the usual. Hard to adjust. Absolutely. In conversation, Christy says, when I, adjust, when I was adjusting to change this last time, my food addiction came back up and I relapsed. But I'm working that, that and having turned a corner, you all have been so helpful with that. That's awesome. I think that if you're dealing with food addiction, it's just, it goes in and out. Um, there's sometimes I've got it and there's sometimes I don't. Um, um, so I, I have some experience with that. Um, I have, um, experience with my dad who had dementia. My grandfather had multiple sclerosis. Um, I do not have a lot of, I've never been an addict myself when it comes to drugs and alcohol. Um, because of my family history of it, I really tried to stay away from that. So I went to food, um, which served this, it was the same kind of addiction. However, it was didn't really, it, it, it did the same thing, but it did the same, yes, you know, on the same level, as far as I'm concerned, they're all addiction in the, in the same category. Um, and so we have to, you know, those are the things I can talk about. Um, I, I do also have a learning disability. Um, there, I think I was probably mis or not diagnosed correctly. Uh, and I think I have dyslexia. And so when I see words, sometimes they kind of get jumbled up. Um, so I do a lot better audio than I do visually, um, you know, and reading and stuff. Uh, but so you all understand that. Um, but, you know, we all have each other's back. There's not one of us that don't have each other's back. We all have to it. We all have to have each other's back. We all have to have people that we can call and say, listen, I'm having trouble. I don't know if people remember, but a couple of weeks ago, I had a situation and I did not want to get on the lifeboat Sunday. Nope, not doing it. And I did not. Monday, I said, I really don't want to go onto the lifeboat today. I'm just going to go in a corner and pretend I don't exist. Well, I got my little fingers going and I got in the lifeboat. Okay. Well, I'm going to go in the lifeboat and now I'm not going to say one word. I'm just going to sit here because I know I need to be here. Well, my little fingers got typing and I thought, oh, most likely Tommy's never going to see the comment. He saw the comment and he said, and he made it known. And he said, I said, all I want to do is just pretend that I don't exist and just go hide in the corner and crochet all day. And I can just forget that I exist. And you know what happened? People in the chat that, that know me said there and said, sorry, that's not going to happen. We love you too much. You're too much. You're in, too important to us for you to hide. You don't get to do that anymore because friends for me were something that I always kind of had a little bit of, but not a lot of. And um, they were just not only Tommy, but everybody in the chat was sitting there going, no, sorry, you don't get to do that anymore. And then at one point I said, well, I'm really sorry I get to dump. I'm sorry I'm dumping. And he said, no, now I'm going to get you. Well, you know what? He lovingly, as I'm sure Captain Calhoun would have done, gave me a little bit of a loving butt kick and said, no. This is the place to dump. Patricia says, I just found you and grateful. I, I'm ever knitter and want to learn crochet. Bless it, your loving smile and positivity. Thank you. Um, and so I was just like, I, he said, this is the place to dump. If you're going to dump anything, if you're going to dump how you're feeling and everything, this is the place to do it. Well, I was sitting, in, yeah, I was sitting in bed, having my coffee my bones were, you know, warm up very slowly in the morning as a fibromyalgia patient. And I was sitting there with the coffee, crying, typing, trying to have my breakfast and going, that was the day of the eclipse. And so I went out about 12 o'clock and went on my channel and I went on and people that knew me knew that I wasn't myself and that it was okay to be not okay. They could tell in the way I was acting. They could tell in the fact that I was kind of had a, you know, down, was kind of 
sad and I was kind of down and I was, I just wasn't myself, but I got out of my room. I got outside. I got on my channel and I started talking and I started feeling better. That was the power of connection. That's why this channel to me, y'all means the world. I said to Captain Calhoun from the start, I have nothing but respect for this channel. And to me, sitting here doing this is such an amazing, amazing honor. It really, really is. And I hold it with great responsibility. Um, you all are loved. Every solitary one that shows up in that chat, you all are loved tremendously. Um, and I'm just beyond, I'm beyond grateful. Um, you don't get to beat yourself up over being human and you need to get it out. Absolutely match. I, I think I'm saying it right. Um, absolutely. You don't get to beat yourself up, but I had people. And what happened in that chat was that I was talking and, and Tommy was using me a little bit as an example to be able to say, now we're focusing and helping Mary. What does that do to the rest of us? Some of them were, there was one person kind of going through the same, um, you know, um, the same kind of issue. And then they were focusing on me and they, they were helping somebody and they were kind of forgetting their, their problems. And, uh, you know, they felt better because they were helping. And so that's what we're all here to do. Hi, pajama pixie. Hi, heart of Orion jewelry. Um, that's what we're all here to do. That's why we have each other's back. Um, I did do something and I'm going to show it off. <laughs> I'm going to let you all have a laugh. Hopefully this is just, this is just a relaxed one. Y'all I decided because we have, of course, the Molesky trophy and I thought, okay, I can crochet a trophy. <laughs> y'all ready to laugh? <laughs> There's not a lot of, um, uh, um, of, videos on how to crochet a trophy. <laughs> so I did one, I modified it. And so I'm, I'm going to keep this one just because I want you to know I'm going to improve. I love blankets. That's my thing. I'm, I love doing blankets and in conversations with Christy says the best way for me to feel better is to help someone else. It gets me out of my head. Absolutely. 100%. And V bomb says, I think we all feel like we need to be punished for our misadventures. Yeah, we sometimes, but we don't need to. That's that's the old tapes. And I've done that on my channel and I will do it again on here on how we can help each other break the old cassette tapes. So I don't do crochet in the round very easily or very well. <laughs> and it shows. I do one scarf pattern. I do one hat pattern. And that's it. I do my soap uh, savers, which now I have made soap caddies. I do those very well. And I love doing blankets and I'll do some wearables, but I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do a crochet trophy. You ready? It pitiful. <laughs> it's pitiful. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is worth laughing over y'all. It is just, it, it's pitiful. I thought uh, it's, <laughs> Somebody said, I'll never laugh at your work. I said, please go ahead and laugh at this one because this one's just, <laughs> it doesn't even want to stay up straight. I mean, it is pitifully, and I'm trying to figure out my camera because I moved it. It's just pitiful. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something else, <laughs> but I will keep this as just a memory of my first little white boat thing. Cause I thought I had to have something when somebody says they've been sober. Mile high hike says, Mary, I share some of the same struggles, but I've been so respectful for how much you deal with daily. And here you are bringing us together. You're an inspir inspiring. Thank you. Um, I, <laughs> Pajama Pixie says she loves the trophy. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do something similar to what's behind me, one of the panels. And I'm going to do uh, anchor. Um, and I'm going to do it on in some kind of frame. Um, and I'm going to name it the Chucky Anchor Award. Now, when people think of Chucky, they may think of that movie, but we're not going to think of that movie. I don't like horror movies at all. 
But um, uh, the um, but the Chucky Award is going to be in honor of my dad. My dad served in the Navy, so I'm going to um, um, going to do a, a panel with an anchor on it, and then we will uh, I will name it that because when he used to go on he went on golf retreats with our church, he went just for the connection. He was not the greatest golfer in the world. He just went to go have fun. He went to hang out with the guys. He went for the weekend. Well, they had an award the first year that was the wor- the lowest scoring person got the trophy because they felt so bad for him. They gave him something. He was so happy. He was laughing. He was came home. Look at the trophy I won. Look, I got it. I got it. I got it. And he was just so happy about that trophy. And then the next year he brought it back to um, the the group and they did it again. But this time they made the trophy from the person that got the least score to the person that improved the most. So we're going to do the Chucky Anchor Award in honor of my dad. Um, it's a relatable trophy, a bit messy, but that's life. <laughs> but I get I'm half, halfway fine with having bombed freestyle waffle dough, never having made one before because I'm perfection like that. <laughs> Patricia says, my goodness, I don't know you from Adam, but I can see you have a big heart and full of love and and love and life you are. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, And so I'm going to do something that's beautiful. What a wonderful idea. I thought, yep, I'm going to do it. And so we're going to name it the Chucky Anchors Award. And when somebody comes on and say they've gotten, you know, they've gotten, they've had a month of sobriety or even a day of sobriety. I'm going to hold that up and that's going to be in honor of my dad because he improved. Um, I'm also going to say that I am, I'm running on a computer that takes a little bit of time. It has just a little bit of time y'all. And it takes just a little bit of time. It's an older computer and it's just like me. It takes a little while to warm up. So I'm probably going to have to get a computer that has a little bit more, um, more this century, but it's working. So if I'm a little slow, just realize that's probably very much like I am. So anyway, that's what I'm I'm, I'm probably going to end up doing is, is doing that. But I will keep that trophy for when we just want to have a good laugh. <laughs> when we want to have a good laugh, but <laughs> I can pull it out. I'm not going to get rid of it, but it's just pitiful. It, it's it's a pitiful pitiful trophy but anyway it gave you all a good laugh and that was good um and laughter is such a great medicine if you you know if you are looking to laugh go visit uh Jeannie robertson she is amazing um go watch her first video sending a man to the grocery store no disrespect to the men out there but it is hysterical and when I was going through, I will do a, um, a show on my 2013 year. Whew, that was a doozy. It, the, yeah, I could stick a bit of wire in it too, but I, I could have both. We're going to keep the trophy. Everybody likes it. That makes me feel good. Um, and so, oh, well, thank you, Patricia. I, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I think I'm going to be flying high for, for the rest of the day. Um, and this is a good, this is a good high. Um, but, um, I, yeah, I put the toilet paper in the center. It's not, it's not helping. Oh boy. I guess I could, I don't know. I don't know. I just know I can hold it like this maybe. I was trying, I was trying to do something crew, but, um, I don't even know where I was at. I was at someplace and I forgot where I was. Pipe cleaners may work. It's just, it's a, it gets us to have a good laugh, right? I tried. I don't do round well at all or in the round at all very well, but, um, hi, Anne Hummingbird. It's me. 
but anyway, oh, Jeannie Robertson, that's where I was. Um, Jeannie Robertson, if you go check out her YouTube uh, channel, she has since passed, but she has hundreds of videos on there. Anytime you need a good laugh, even if you don't feel like you, like you need a laugh, go watch her. She is absolutely hysterical and she will get you laughing and just listening to somebody. And even when I've heard the stories over and over again, they are so, um, it's just something about listening to a familiar voice and hearing the story and getting a chuckle out of it, out of it again. And so, you know, I sit and watch a lot of, um, like series. I love Benson. Hi, Sue B. That's okay. You came when you were supposed to. And, um, I like a lot, a lot, a watch a lot of series like Benson and Kenny and Lacey I've watched and, um, oh, um, which other ones? Hazel was another one I started watching. Um, uh, some other, you know, series and they're just, uh, Magna PI and so forth. And I will watch, start watching a series and start crocheting. And I love going to watch Benson, even though I've seen all seven series, every show more than once. And it's just familiar. It's something to go back and, and go back and go, Oh, I, I know these people because I've watched it so much. And it's always my favorite, 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 um, thing. Hazel is an oldie, but I will tell you, Hazel and I would have gone along very, very well together. Very, very well. We would have, we would have hit the mark. Believe me, <laughs> her and I would have done great. Um, and uh, her and I would have just chit-chatted. She was just, you know, I loved it because she kind of, you know, had everybody, you know, she kind of came in, she just welcomed everybody into her, into, it wasn't even her house, but she just welcomed everybody in. Patricia says, I change. I hate it. I just retired having never been lonely 10 years sober. So happy about that blessing. Well, here's Patricia. Here's my little trophy. <laughs> here's a little trophy. Congratulations on 10 years. Yes. I have never sat and watched soap, but I love Benson, but here's to Patricia. <laughs> there we go. There you go. There's a trophy. See, I'm so glad I had it on the ready. It's not perfect. It's a little wonky, but it was, it was made out of lots of love. Let's just put you in a lot of frustration. Cause I'm telling you, I was sitting there going, I don't, I, it got thrown a couple of times. <laughs> if you can laugh and dance about the storm, that is life. You're going to have a hard time. Just make sure you have where to laugh about what. That's public humor and no, and public humor and non-public humor. Yes. Well, she just finds these, she's just had things in her life that happened that were just funny. And she just has made humor out of it. You know, she just says there's humor in everything you, that happened to you in a day. And, um, we can look at the blessing. I can't, and Nicole says, I canceled all my subscriptions when a man died. So I don't watch anything but YouTube. I want to rewatch Supernatural. So once my van is done, I will. Good. Do what you do, do what you need to do. And that we don't, uh, we don't do, we do, I, you know, we have, I think we have Disney and we have Hulu and my husband has Paramount, but we just, we don't even do cable. I will have to try. I, I I just was like, okay. I was like I said, I can do blankets all day long. Round in the round is not something that I enjoy doing. Now on my channel, those that want to come and learn how to crochet, that's not this girl. Mm -mm. This girl will show you where to go to learn how to do it. But thanks to Tommy, I did not want to get on my channel and start to teach people how to do it. <laughs> I learned by just watching YouTube. And I actually learned because my aunt crocheted and I thought, Oh, this will be fun. I'll learn. It can't be that difficult. And my husband said to me, he goes, I can teach you. And I was like, okay. And that didn't work out so well. So we went down to a place that had a knit shop that showed me my basic stuff. And then I decided I was going to do a hat. 
which was just back and forth, like single crochets all the way till you get to the end. And I thought, when I'm done with this hat, I am done. I'm never going to pick up a crochet hook ever again. I am done. I wish I had kept that hat. I think I gave it to my daughter. But I was like, I'm done. And I sewed the hat up and I thought, okay, well, let me try again. Well, I should have never said never say never because I have gone far past that now. But I thought I really wanted to start a YouTube channel, but I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to sit here showing people how to crochet. I thought I didn't feel like I had the talent. And Hemingway says, my grandmother tried to teach me and it was a disaster. Uh-huh. I didn't, I didn't want to teach people how to do it. I've probably learned some bad habits. I probably have, um, you know, gotten things wrong along the way. I'm, I'm not good with writing patterns. I don't really want to teach people how to do it, but I can tell you where to go to learn how to do it. And I can tell you where you can go to do patterns and stuff and stuff. I have found that was helpful. I just don't want to teach people how to crochet. But I love the name Blessed to Crochet because it is something that we're going to talk about on what you need to put in your toolbox when you're dealing with a chronic illness. Fibromyalgia is a chronic illness. It's not all in your head. Um, and we're going to talk about my journey, my experience, but fibro uh, crochet has become that thing that I will utilize when I'm in pain. Another thing I have in my toolbox now that I am so grateful for is connection. It is absolutely such a powerful, powerful tool. And on that eclipse day, when I was in the chat and I was just not having a good day, Tommy had to remind me, Mary, you know, the power of connection. You've seen it. You've witnessed it. You've had it. You've had it done. And it is so true. And it's why this channel is so real to me. It's not just a channel. It is real. A bunch of, with a lot of people that I care about and a lot of people I love. Welcome, Kelsey, new member. Awesome. Um, you know, it, it's just so important. And so, um, you know, it's like I wanted to start my channel as a pl place of connection. I also have something on my channel that's called The Lighthouse. We have the boat here. We also have The Lighthouse on my channel. My husband and I love lighthouses tremendously. <laughs> and, um, excuse me, uh, we love lighthouses. And so my thing for my crew over there is, you need me to turn on the lighthouse, I'll turn on the lighthouse. Um, I don't even, I don't need to, have to be there. And Spanx, you know, Captain Calhoun kind of did it when he did the picture and he let you all in the chat and he wasn't even on. And I thought, if you need me to just be on the lighthouse and, um, you know, be able to turn, you know, turn it on and you all just chit chat, I can go ahead and do that. So we, I have a group called the Lighthouse Beacons. It's in the description in my videos. And so we're called the Lighthouse because I feel like everybody can be a lighthouse. We can all be lighthouses of, of a lighthouse beacon of connection and creativity. And everybody is creative. I don't care if it means that you need to pull out an adult coloring book in order to be able to color. If it gets your mind off pain, if it gets your mind off those ants going in your head, if it gets your mind off of whatever it may be, and it helps you to pull out that adult coloring book, then go ahead and do it. Do have something on hand. Journaling is wonderful. Um, I uh, can crochet for hours. I cannot write for very long. Um, it hurts my hands way, way too much. So a lot of my channel has now become kind of my journal to some degree. I'm going to be starting uh, setting up an email that only I have access to, and I'm just going to start sending emails to it. I can type a lot longer than I can write. I can voice type an email to myself. I don't care what it says. I talk to myself. My, my husband will come and say, you having another meeting with yourself? Yep. Because I do everything audibly. I listen audibly. If I'm reading a book, I will listen. Writing gets you out of, out of your head. Yeah. But I will listen to myself. That's how I work through problems is I will talk and I will talk them out. My dad never met a stranger. I'm my daughter's, uh, my dad's daughter for absolutely sure. I was on my channel. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, you know, I was on my channel, I think, and we were, I was going to 
go into my daughter's house. And it was like an hour. And my mom just got it, got off my live. And she's like, I could never do that. She said, aren't you like your dad? She said, you sat there and talked for an hour with no problem. <laughs> I'm like, yep, I can do it. So I don't, um, I don't really have any desire to teach anybody how to crochet. I just want to be able to get on here. I want to open my place as a lighthouse for beacons for people. Um, we all are beacons. We all are lighthouses. Um, and I want to be there and, um, and Josh is my husband. <laughs> so thank you for coming in and support my mom and my husband are here. I'm so happy. Um, uh, you know, as, as the rest, as, as long as with everybody else in here, I am just, oh my goodness. Uh, this is a great, 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 great honor. And you all are making it amazing. Absolutely amazing. And so, you know, I just, I, I, um, I don't want to teach people how to crochet. I just want to connect with people and I am getting so much blessing out of my channel, so much out of the lifeboat, so much out of Reese's channel. We've got the relate about where this whole thing of getting lives and doing and having lives and having this platform is such a powerful, powerful tool. I was on my channel one day and so he said, um, you need to stop streaming and go living. And I'm like, I haven't lived since I've been on the lifeboat. That's when I started living because that's when I started to find connection. It doesn't mean that we don't need to replace the connection around the fire pit. We need to do that. We need to call a friend and say, hey, you know what? Patricia says, happy dance. <laughs> Trophy is beyond adorable. Um, we need to call a friend up and say, hey, got to go for a cup of coffee. Um, let's do this. Let's do that. We need to do that. This is not... Um, this is not going to, oh, I'm so sorry, Kelsey. Um, can we throw some ones up for Kelsey too? Um, the, um, you know, we're not replacing the being around the fire pit and going out and having a cup of coffee and having a friend over for a meal or whatever, um, whatever it may be. Um, we're not, we're not, uh, discrediting that. Um, that still needs to be an intricate part of what we're doing. But this is another form of connection, y'all. This is a tremendous part of connection. There are people like me, if you're a fibromyalgia sufferer um, and survivor and warrior, um, there are days when going outside of the house is really difficult. When I injured my back and tripped over a vacuum, stupid cord, um, on Tuesday, um, I threw out my back. I could not have gone out. I was using a walker and I was walking and trying to hold my breath because the pain was so bad and, and I could not have gone out and, and gone outside the house. And so for me, this has just opened up such a connection point when I'm having one of those days, where I just cannot do it. I don't have the energy. I'm too tired. The pain level is too high. Whatever it may be, going outside the house is just, I'm too exhausted. And then for a couple of days later, as it's gotten better, I found myself really tired from just dealing with the pain level that was heightened. Um, you know, even though um, the, the, the thing was heightened, I was tired just from dealing with the additional physical pain I was under. Patricia says, oh, please not Chucky. The movie, even the crazy friend Brad was a voice of Chucky. Well, maybe we'll do it at the Charles or the, the Chuck Award or something. Maybe I'll do the Chuck Award instead of Chucky. How does that sound? Just a way of honoring my dad. I know that he used to just hate it. My husband was probably the only one that could get away with calling him Chucky. He hated that. But he loved the fact that they named the Chucky Award after him. <laughs> he just loved it. Um and I will do a, a show on dementia because I had to care for my dad and that will be a, an emotional show. Um, and I think that this is great that there's people that are going to be coming on that are going to be giving you different aspects. Um, you know, unless you're dealing with fibromyalgia, you don't know what it's like to be in somebody's body that's dealing with it. And Hummingbird Chuck is my last dad's name. Oh, 
Yeah, it's a special name, Charles. But he didn't like Charles. He liked Chuck. But he loved that Chucky Award. Let me just tell you about it. <laughs> Still want to call it Flop Floppy? We may. It, it may. I it, I may not be able to. We may have to stick around with this one. Just for giggles and laughs, right? Oh boy. Um, but I think that this is great. That there's going to be other aspects coming in. There's going to be people you're going to hear about. You know, we we love Captain Calhoun and we we love Admiral Tommy. They don't deal with fibromyalgia. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to wake up and go, how could I sleep all night and be exhausted still? Hope between the dreams says my father is dying of early onset uh, Alzheimer's. Hugs to you, Mary. Thank you. Um, it will be a discussion. Uh, I because. It is just as difficult for the person that is walking through it as it is for the caregiver. Um, it, it's 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 um, it's very difficult. And and hope between the dreams. If again you need someone to talk to, my email's there. Please connect with me if you need just someone to talk to that's been down that road. Um, I totally get it. Totally, one hundred percent. Um, and his story will be told, but he never met a stranger. So I'm kind of doing, I'm, you know, I've spent many years trying to not be like my dad. It didn't work. I'm just like him. I've never met a stranger. Um, so, you know, we, I, so this connection point is really important to the people that are dealing with maybe a chronic illness. They can't go outside the house. They're raising a special needs child. I know when I was raising my daughter, it was like, man, I wish I had something like this because I didn't have the time. I didn't, I was too exhausted when I go to work and then I come home and then I cook dinner and I was like, and, and then trying, you know, her sleep patterns were off. And, and I, I just was like, I don't have energy to go out and chit chat for hours with a friend or go see a movie. I just, I, I wasn't taking care of her. I was sleeping. So, that's another point is that these, that this is a connection point for people that are either dealing with those kind of things or caregiving for somebody that's a 24 hour thing. They may not have the time to go out and just have a, you know, chit chat with a friend. So then this becomes a place that they can come and connect. Nicole says, my dad has mixed dementia. It is exhausting. I spend Tuesdays there. My sisters live there and are the caregivers, but it's become unmanageable now. I know I get it. I totally get it. And Patricia says one hour, one day, one week, one month of sobriety are blessings. No one should ever take for granted 10 years for me in July. It's beyond amazing. Here's Floppy again. <laughs> oh boy. I may have to have two awards, right? <laughs> anyway, I tried. I gave it a whirl. If one of the mods, if they're here, if they will put up surviving together, she will be on at three o'clock. So let's go on and support them. And, and can I just please say, let's do what we're doing with me, with every ripple that comes on here. Um, this is a process. We still have to figure out how we, how Spanx is not, you know, Captain Calhoun and I just call him Spanx. I hope he doesn't mind. <laughs> it just comes out. He doesn't have to be there necessarily to do this. Cause I know he's doing some stuff in the background. Um, and we, we want to be able for him not necessarily to have to do this. So we, that's all the work in progress is trying to figure out how to make sure that we can do it. And, and I can put up uh, comments and everything. And Pixie Pajama says, uh, fibromyalgia is a beast that no one can see and no one can possibly understand if you don't live it. We all have struggles and we are all taught to suffer in silence. TLB, great place to just be. Absolutely, 100%. Um, so this is just all a work in progress. Let's give everybody, please, that comes on the love and the care and the grace um, as they're doing this, this is huge. Um, and, um, um, this is huge <laughs> and somewhat a little nerve wracking. You all made it such a delight. Absolutely. 100% a delight. Um, 
I'm going to be, I'm going to be smiling for the rest of the day. I just am so thrilled that I was able to just give back and that I was able for you all to put a face to the name, Mary Jones and uh, Blessed to Crochet. Um, you all have really honestly made such a difference in my life. And I'm grateful for each and every one of you. And I can't say that without getting emotional. I no longer am without friends. I'm no longer without support. I'm no longer without having somebody in my five. And I'm so, so grateful. And I love each and every one of you all. So thank you for making this a delight. Let's do this for every ripple that comes on. Let's give them support. There are going to be kinks to work out. We're going to do it. And we're going to do it because we want to help Captain Calhoun. We all have an invested interest in this, in this channel because it is connection and it has grown. And we have to sit here being very thankful for what Admiral Tommy has created. He has created an amazing thing. And we all need to just be here to do everything and lift Captain Calhoun up and say, we got your back. We've got every back in this place. Everybody's back. Thank you, SB. Mary, that's beautiful. So glad you're here. Wally says, thank you, Mary, for just being you. Um, Kelly says, you're such a great resource. I, I bet pain is a big issue around here. Yeah, it is. Susie B says, I have fibromyalgia and arthritis. Lily, every joint and clean my fingers and toes. I am so sorry. Thank you, Susie B. Love you too. Um, I'm going to get off because I want you all to please go over to Surviving Together. Um, please go and check it out. Um, she is, I don't want to run over her. I try very hard. I do not come on my channel on the sevens because I want everybody to go into the lifeboat. Uh, we're all here to help. Um, and maybe the next time I come on, we'll just start asking Mary questions and you can get to know me. That's part of this process. We're not going to jump in the deep end just yet. One little bit at a time and we'll start just asking questions. Have a great, great day. And I don't have a disconnect button. So Captain Calhoun's got to do it for me. <laughs> but like I say, stay connected, y'all. And go check out stay, uh, Surviving Together. She's on at 3 o'clock. All right. And love you all. Thank you all tremendously. What a great ripple start. That's for sure. Stay connected. I don't have a way of ending this. So we're just going to stay until... <laughs> Captain Calhoun takes care of the takes care of the rain. See, this is part of figuring out all the kinks. We're gonna do it. We're gonna get it. Um, hope be hope between the dreams says so great to see you, Mary. It was great to see all of you. Um, you're welcome, everybody. Oh my goodness, I I hope I did it proud. That's all I have to say. I hope I did it proud. And uh, Captain Calhoun, when you when you want, oh, I can leave the studio. Never mind. And you all can chit chat. I forgot about that piece. I'm learning this thing, you all. That's what he's waiting for me to do, I guess. I'm, I'm learning it. We're going to get it. Love you all. And as I say every time I end my show, stay connected. It truly does make a difference. The ripples have begun. Have a great day. Bye.